Chapter 1.4.5 Bitcoin's coins have only ever been a metaphor. The names we give to our computing systems are metaphors. These names are not meant to be taken literally. At the risk of insulting the intelligence of the reader, the computer system which stores our emails and cat pictures is not literally a cloud. Similarly, the computer system used to sell personal and preferential information of billions of people to advertisers is not literally called a Facebook. Moreover, any object described using any type of object-oriented software design specification is not an actual object. These descriptions are abstractions used to make it easier to understand the desired functionality and behavior of our software. In 2008, a pseudonymous software engineer named Satoshi Nakamoto decided to describe a variation, the first reusable proof of work system developed, a variation of typo the first re reusable proof of work system developed by Hal Finney as a coin rather than to continue to call it a proof. Instead of calling it a reusable proof of work protocol that utilizes a decentralized server architecture rather than a trusted server architecture, the pseudonymous engineer called it Bitcoin and asserted that it could be used as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. This pseudonymous engineer was famously short with their description of this technology. Nobody seems to know who the engineer was or where they worked, although they clearly had subject matter expertise in NSA cryptography. The specification they wrote was informally published and it's only eight pages long. This pseudonymous engineer did not elaborate much about the design in follow-on conversations, and they famously disappeared just two years after first announcing the project. Nothing was formally published or peer-reviewed. The Bitcoin White Paper. The way Jason words that paragraph makes me think he has certain suspicions. What exactly those suspicions are? I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to go back and reread that and do some real thinking. Back to the text. The following point should be made explicitly clear. What academia and industry discuss about Bitcoin, including and especially what has been formally published about this technology, is what other people who didn't design it have to say about it based off one, one of many potential use cases for proof of work technologies and two, a metaphorical design specification produced by a pseudonymous entity that orphaned the project. Everything that has been written about Bitcoin through formal channels was written by people speculating about someone else's metaphorical design concepts, developing their own theories about it connecting their own dots based on the same minimal public information. Consequently, there is no expert or authority on general purpose use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. There are only people with expertise on singular use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. See there, I mean, that's in bold, okay? It is a shot at all the people who told him his theory was shit. And it's also a disclaimer because maybe he's saying that his expertise is war. And this global power projection game we play. And when he looks at the Bitcoin protocol that's what he sees. And there could be many reasons for that. Deliberate, the fact that it's simply our nature. Uh, okay, back to the text, sorry. 
<clears throat> Let me reread. Yeah. Consequently, there it all, there's no expert or authority on general purpose use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. There are only people with expertise on singular use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. An overwhelming majority of the professional and academic analysis surrounding Bitcoin has been centered around the presumption that the only use case for this technology is to serve as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system for apparently no other reason than the fact that peer-to-peer -peer payments were the first operationally successful use case for this technology made by the pseudonymous engineer who developed it. The public appears to be ignoring the principles of computer theory and interpreting Bitcoin's name and design specifications literally, not metaphorically, despite the fact that coin was not even the first name or theorized use case of proof of work bread put in technology. People are not only adopting the habit of assuming the only possible use case for this technology is financial, they're also adopting the habit of acting like Bitcoin's coins are only coins, even though it's incontrovertibly true that all object-oriented software design specifications are abstract. In other words, it's incontrovertibly true that Bitcoin's coins, coins, Bitcoin's coins don't exist. Coins are completely imaginary concept. Like anything abstract, Bitcoin's coin, Bitcoin's coins, <laughs> could just as easily be abstracted as anything else the imagination is capable of conceiving. Hence why proof-of-work technologies were called something else for more than a decade before Nakamoto published the Bitcoin design specification. <clears throat> Yet people keep acting like Bitcoin is strictly a monetary protocol. Moreover, people with economic or financial expertise keep acting like experts in proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin for practically no other reason than the fact that this technology was arbitrary called a coin and has miscellaneous operational use case in finance. Use cases in finance. <clears throat> Internal combustion engines are useful for cutting down trees with chainsaws, but that doesn't make a lumberjack an expert in internal combustion engine design. So why are financiers claiming to be experts in proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin? The most they can claim to be experts in is how to use proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin for miscellaneous financial use cases. Theoretically speaking, anything to include an arbitrarily named software abstraction can be monetized. Monetary value itself is an abstract concept. So of course, something abstract can have monetary value. Moreover, bits of information transferred and stored via computers can represent any kind of information. So of course, it can represent monetary information. It's not the fact that people have assigned monetary value to proof of work protocols like Bitcoin that the author finds noteworthy. It's the fact that people aren't acknowledging how the term coin is just as much of an arbitrary name for proof of work protocols as their underlying bits of information, as the name stamp or bread pudding. For some reason, much of current academic research doesn't acknowledge this basic principle of computer science. This would explain why researchers keep recycling the same theoretical frameworks when analyzing Bitcoin. This would also explain how academic consensus about the primary value del delivered function of proof of work protocols changed following the operational success of Bitcoin. But why has academic consensus about proof of work changed if underlying theories in computer science haven't? 